Everything is connected. I talked to a doctor friend of mine. She is a uh, gynecologist. <clears throat> and we talked periodically. And she told me she was going to do a surgery. And she changed her mind because she couldn't stop the blood flow. This woman was having all this excessive bleeding. She said, I changed my mind and I tried to do something else. Then she said, I did a surgery with someone else to do this embolization and it didn't work. And I'm wondering if I need to do another type of surgery. And she's still bleeding. And I said, well, did you ask her about her diet? And the sad thing about it is a friend of mine, she says, no, what does the diet have to do with the bleeding? And this is your medical doctor. Not all medical doctors, because some of my best friends are medical doctors, but her in particular, here's a lady that's bleeding, and you're trying to justify or figure out if diet has anything to do with it. My first line of defense, if someone comes to me like that, I want to find out a little bit about them, their history, what you've been eating, what you ate last year, what you ate 10 years ago, what you ate 20 years ago, because that would affect you now. And ladies, if you've ever been on birth control pills before, you need to do something about hormonal imbalances when you get older because there is a Dr. John Lee that wrote a book called The Progesterone Cover-Up that proves that birth control pills are linked to different types of cancers. Men, all of you all who are eating all this chicken and everything else, your prostate is swelling, you go to the doctor, your PSA is high, and right away, you either want to cut your prostate out or give you some type of implant. This is very real. How does the prostate swell? How do we bleed like this? And how do all these things happen? Well, everything is definitely connected. And if you follow the signs of your body, you will begin to understand that if you have a pain here, for those of you who are suffering from corporal tunnel, it's going to manifest here. Well, what happens is most people aren't thinking about here because the pain is in the hand. I can't move it. But most of the time, the problem is here. And if you research it a little further, you'll find out that the problem happens back in the kidney area. Fluids get in the tunnel. You can't move. You get stiff. You go to the doctor. They want to either cut you or do something else. But you haven't took a minute and said, well, maybe my kidneys are backing up fluid. And that's why my hands are getting stiff. So you got to follow the line. Is it a pandemic or is it not? Well, is this flu season or is it not? Is it? I thought it started in January or February. When's flu season? Tradi traditionally, when's flu season? Do we know? January, February, isn't that? So, you said when it gets cold? <laughs> <laughs> so if flu season is January, February, let's say January, February, why are we talking about H1N1 now? Think about that. Now, I'm not saying that we're living in a capitalist society, because I don't want you to think that, for any reason. I don't want you to think it's about money, because if you do, you're probably right. But I want you to think that on your own. Pandemic means it's going to be a serious event, and many of us are going to suffer. On the news, they're saying that there are 4,000 now people that died from H1N1, and there's 22 million cases of people that are infected. I said this morning on my radio show, and I said to you, check out the messenger. Who's giving us these messages? 4,000 people died from the H1N1. My, my question is, how did they get it in the first place, and where was their body at the time that they got it? Were they on medication? Were they in the hospital? Had they got something else? Were there pre-existing conditions? Was there something else going on besides 4,000 deaths? Did you read anything about that in the newspaper? All you heard was 4,000 deaths. Is that true? <clears throat> so suppose it turns out to not be true. Will we ever know? But guess what? Many of us are getting afraid, and a lot of us are running to get the flu shot. And of course, it's your choice, but I want to tell you a little bit about some of the drawbacks of getting the flu shot. This virus was originally referred to as swine flu. And if you have my book, this has been out a couple of years. I actually talked about it before the flu was out. And you'll find that the truth of the matter is immunization shots are very dangerous. From the time that we are young until the time we get older, it doesn't change. 
Most of us are still walking around with the wounds on our shoulder, the scars. We're all branded. Did you see Manchurian Candidate? So now they're putting chips in. You might blow up after a while, but fortunately, we're all branded. <clears throat> and a lot of these diseases that we have are not by accident. Some of you get seasonal allergies, this quote-unquote diabetes thing that you have and the high blood pressure. You can almost always trace it back to some of the shots and immunizations and medications that you've gotten from this point up until now. You have to remember you are the sum total of every experience that you've ever had up until this point. So any medication, anything that you've ever taken, any disease, any infection, anything that you've ever had you're still, is still a part of your system, whether you want to believe it or not. Medication will throw it in remission and make you feel better, but it's not going to fix the problem. And many times it'll come back with a different pattern. We're going to get back to this. Swine flu, this is what they're saying. I put these figures together, not because I believe them, because you needed something to look at. I don't believe half the stuff I say in the news. Because I don't write the news, and I know the news is censored. Every news station censors the news before you see it. Some of you don't believe it, but they do. This is what you're going to have to deal with very shortly, some of you, and you're going to be threatened, many of you, about your jobs. You can't go to work or you can't, if you're especially a hospital worker, if you don't get this shot, you can't go to work because you're going to infect some people or you're going to catch something. Well, the bad part about that is it's almost like a gang of people sitting back saying, look, if you don't comply, it's like some mob stuff, you know? If you don't comply, you're going to lose your job. Well, they needed your job anyway because the economy is bad, so there's a reason. But the Cermosol is very toxic. It's a part of the shot. They're not going to tell you that, but I'm going to tell you. In fact, it's on your slip there. Took me 10 years, <clears throat> probably in some other time, to come up with a formula when they had the bird flu. It's called HF4325. In my book, I talk about it, but... I did it using radionics information and imprints because I was very pissed off when the bird flu came out because I was walking around in Bala Kenwood in Philadelphia and I saw this sign on Rite Aid that says free flu shots. I was like, oh my God, they're going to kill us. And I really felt that way. I said, they're going to kill us because what's going to happen is you don't feel the effects right away. Two months, three months, six months, a year or so, you'll feel the effects. And I see this especially with a lot of people that get shots that go overseas. But you can't make the connection because it's so far removed, it doesn't make sense. It's like, how can that happen? The flu shot I got six months ago or a year ago. But it's all connected. Well, I developed that formula and I also developed another formula called the Master Remedy. And some of you who are in this room have been taking it. And it really gotten some really good results. Not saying that's going to cure the situation, but it's non-invasive, it's odorless, it's tasteless, it's not toxic, and it's safe. And we need some safety. I spend a lot of time now that I've been doing this for a while in my laboratory developing things because we need that. There's nobody developing things for us. Everybody's giving us stuff. You got Merck, you got Smith Klein Beckman, you got everybody, these big pharmaceutical companies coming up with all these drugs. Nobody's doing any lab work. So I spent a lot of time in the laboratory doing work because we need direction and we need help. They're trying to stop, and this is government, trying to stop our right to take vitamins. I don't know if you know about that, and supplements. That's a big issue right now. Because preventive medicine is rivaling allopathic medicine. There's more people switching to alternatives now than going the Western routes, simply because they're making a lot of mistakes. Western medicine has its place, but there's a lot of mistakes being made. So there's changes going on. And with changes, you need things that are going to fight those changes. 